So transitioning to PA programs, pathologist assistant training programs. So because it's such a desirable job, I'm assuming PA programs are pretty competitive. So how difficult is it to get into PA school? You know, I don't know if I can say exactly how many applicants. I know that there are hundreds of applicants and each program only accepts maybe two mm-hmm. that, or to 25. I think the largest group is 25. So that's pretty um, low percentage. Yeah, because they're not taking a lot of students every year. It really limits. I mean, that's what makes it competitive, right? Mm-hmm. There's limited spots. So who gets um, those spots? Right. So here's what you can do to kind of beef up your your application. I think it is incredibly important to be familiar with this profession, meaning that you have worked as a gross tech side by side with a PA. At minimum, you have should shadow a PA and know what their day to day looks like and make sure that that's right for you. It's a two year program and it is it's a it's an intense two years. So you should really make sure that you want to do this before, before you get started. And if if you can't work as a gross tech, I have had uh, classmates that didn't have any grossing experience, um, but they did have autopsy experience. So they worked as a deaner. Mm. Um, So either get yourself some autopsy experience, work as a, as a gross tech, which you can you don't have to have a bachelor's degree to be a gross tech you just have to have a minimum number of uh, biology and chemistry classes taken already Um, so close usually it's like junior senior year of like a biology degree you have enough science credits to qualify to be a gross tech so go do go do that Um, observe an autopsy because i don't think you know you can handle that until you're actually in the room. Um, So if you can, sometimes that can be difficult if you don't already have connections in the hospital to observe. Um, But if you can try, try and get as much exposure to pathology as you can. Um, You're going to have to take anatomy and physiology. If you have TA experience in anatomy or physiology, that would look really great. Um, they like to see genetics and biochemistry. Those are not required, but they like to see those classes as part of your undergraduate degree. Um, what else? So being proficient in a lot of the higher level science courses, especially obviously anatomy and physiology, Mm -hmm. uh, experience you said might even be more important than grades. You have to know what a PA does and you have experience in the autopsy lab preferably in the lab just making sure you know what you're getting into that you really want to do it yeah i think if you can demonstrate you have a good understanding of the profession that that is really important um i i had really good grades i think that that does make you competitive some programs require the gre some do not Hmm. so um maybe that's a factor in where you apply um, is there like a minimum number of hours of experience that you need in a gross lab or a pathology lab or anything like that? Or is it just, you need to demonstrate that you understand what you're doing? Yeah. At this, to my understanding at this moment, programs don't have a minimum requirement for mm. shadowing PAs or even autopsy because they know that it's difficult for people to find that if they're not already in, if they don't have a network that allows them to do that. Right. Um, so they don't have that as a requirement, but that's what makes you competitive. Okay. So it's not required, but it is the best thing for you to do. And so that in addition to good grades is what you really need to get into PA school. Yes. So would you say anything else as far as advice on how to get into PA school for people who might be interested in this profession? I think pick, pick a program, look at, um, Look at their clinical partners Mm -hmm. and decide how you want your clinical year to be shaped. And that can help you decide on where to go um, when you, when you're applying. I think as far as getting into pathology assisting school, as long as your, your grades are really good and you've demonstrated that you know what a pathologist assistant does when you interview, 
I think they also consider demeanor. And if you um, present yourself as someone with energy and a good attitude and a willingness to learn, and especially an excitement and passion for the, the profession, that that's also really important. So there, there is an interview aspect of this. Mm -hmm. If somebody out there really wants to be a PA, a pathologist assistant, good grades, especially in anatomy and physiology, and experience, enough experience that you can demonstrate that you know what a PA does and why you want to be one is the main things that you need. I will say this as well. Um, having prior working experience is also really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, if you worked as a med tech, that's awesome. If you worked as a a histotech or a histotechnologist, that's really great because um, the specimens you submit as a PA feed into histology. So knowing the histology department is really going to help you out. Um, even even being a an EMT is that is that yeah. right? An EMT. What's the em the emergency medical people? What are they? Yeah, doing? like the people on the ambulance and EMT. EMT, yeah. So EMT experience is even really helpful because if you are doing autopsies, they come with all those, I don't know if this is morbid or not, but the, the bodies arrive with all of the lines and um, tubes with them. So you need to know what those are, those are so you can document them. Okay. So not just lab experience, but basically medical experience, being a patient care tech, an EMT, something like that could also help you. Yes, 100%. That's cool. That makes sense. So it sounds like there's no like strict guidelines for how many hours, but you just have to demonstrate that you know the whole medical process, you've worked in the medical field and preferably in histology and things like that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So do you feel comfortable sharing your stats? I know pre-PA, pre-med students always like their stats. What GPA do I need? How many hours? So what was your GPA? Sure. So I graduated um, with a degree in biotechnology with a 3.9. Wow. Does everybody need a 3.9 to have a chance at getting into PA school? No, I think that at minimum you need a 3.0. Keep okay. this in mind. The reason why I think they look at that is when you are in the program, you need to maintain a GPA of, three, of a 3.0. So even though you have 18 credit hours a semester and you are under all this pressure, if you don't maintain that 3.0, you could be asked to leave the program. So right. they want to make sure that um, you've demonstrated in the past that you you've kept your grades up. So you're more likely to be successful if they accept you into the program. Yeah, it's interesting. One thing, so one of my most popular videos is how to get into PA school with a low GPA. And a lot of people who maybe didn't do very well in college still want, you know, an amazing job like being a PA, a physician assistant or a pathology assistant. But one thing that you really need to ask yourself is if you ended up graduating with a low GPA, you may have had some struggles, some obstacles or some things that came up. So maybe you are a good student, but something's happened, but you need to look at it from the school's perspective and they have this incredibly rigorous curriculum and the job that you're going to do is incredibly important and difficult academically and people's lives depend on it. So it does make sense that you really do want as high of a GPA as possible so that they can trust you and your academic abilities. But I guess what I'm looking for here is numbers. So like you had a 3.9, you got in, you said at least a 3.0, just based on your experience about what was the average college GPA of the applicant that actually got in? Oh, there, I feel like we're all type A, high, high strung perfectionists. So if they all weren't above a three, like six, I would be, I would be very surprised. Okay. So they definitely were, high they were GPA. Six. Yeah, but I, I will say this, depending on the, the program, that you could make up for it as long as you meet the minimum requirements. They're not going to, you know, throw those out of the, the window for you. But as long as you meet the minimum requirements, I feel like you could make it up with experience. You've worked as a gross tech for years. You've worked as a, a histotech for years or a, a deaner to come with that experience, I think you could make up for a poor GPA.